This episode of Strange Love brought to you by Treasure Licious. Good evening. This is Strange Love, and I'm your host, Cami Chaos. Welcome, babies. Welcome to an After Hours edition of Strange Love. I'm Cami Chaos. As always, I'm joined by Dr. Normal. Hiya. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> and our guests this week are Bron Patoyo. And Amber Case. Hello. Whoa. Oh, hello. Let's try oh, that again. Let's turn off. <laughs> Let me try that one more time. <laughs> Our guests this week are Brown Batoyo. Hello. And Amber Case. Hello. I'm sorry. That's okay. <laughs> I'm the- sorry. <laughs> Angry at the Windows player here that keeps like going playing the Windows. Music. That keeps doing what you tell it to do, but well, I play you don't the theme, and I've it. got the other thing queued up, and then it goes and goes. Oh, you must want to play the next thing too, and it's like. And you can't submit a bug report because there's no department working on that anymore. It's operator error. Uh, yeah. Operator error. Sticky fingers. Sticky, sticky fingers. So, before so. we go any further into the show, we've done an episode now with you guys talking about your tech podcast. Okay. What are your other projects? What else are you guys doing? Great question. That you want to talk about? Because I don't know. Or that you want to point me. people to? Yes, get, yeah. get the long pieces of paper out of your pockets. And we'll of course, get the laptops. Exit music. <laughs> yes. What are you working? Oh, you're making laptops? No. Yeah. yeah. Fantastic. So, uh, I'll so take So recently, one. we um, we started our laptop project. Mm-hmm. And, um, <laughs> we Thirty seconds ago. Laptop wiki project. We we, we want to call it the um, the the two. What is it? There's like the six minute abs and the five minute abs. So we want to oh. have like the the ninety nine dollar laptops. And yeah. Stuff. Like hey, three minute buns. Ninety nine dollar laptops. Yeah. It should, well, oh, you're just my computer's know. out of power. You're losing your mm. army science, but that, that's okay. Yeah. We we actually have these magical things in the studio called outlets. Why don't you tell us what a tell me if I get this right? Cyborg anthropologist is cyborg cyber. Yeah, cyber, yeah, cyber. got it. Splendiferific Torius Um, so cyborg. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, that was hard to. to I tried to learn it. Believe there. me, I tried There's, to learn it too. It's like a, I'm getting it slowly. I don't know. Super it's like it's super It's the super torusacular. Spiffalicious torus tacular ischus tacular torus. I think it changed from the first time that you said it. That one was that one was afterthought. You know, it was not the the formal form of the form. And is this the formal form of the form? The formal form of the form. What's the formal form of the form? Tell us the formal one. We want to know because I want to practice okay. it. Okay. Spiffalicious. Spiffalicious. Torius tacular. Torius tacular. Ishus tacular. Ishus tacular. Torius licious. Torius licious. Spiffalicious. Torius tacular. Torius tac. Oh, I see. I can't even do it anymore. It's a. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Tonight's word is. Spiffalicious. Torius tacular. Ishus tacular. Torius licious. Woohoo! Very nice. We need a number too, right? Can we have like a number be like infinity or something? <laughs> that really screws up the kids on Sesame Street, doesn't it? <laughs> One, two, three. Hello, I am the count. Today's number is infinity. <laughs> the kids will like die. Like, yeah. They're trying to go to bed. One, ah, 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 ah. The guy coming Ooh, down with the pizza ah, boxes. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> Mr. Noodle trying to dance infinity. Holy crap. <laughs> Cookie monsters like. <laughs> <laughs> cookie on he's the only one that wouldn't have a problem with it cookie monsters could eat cookies right? until the end of the world and he would be fine he's so, my favorite character and yeah, do you know yeah. why because he likes to eat cookies because he is a being on a mission a very directed one you know he is passionate about cookies and that's why i like the cookie monster you're right best. i you're think right. he's easily distracted though because he'll eat things that aren't cookies as well clearly he doesn't use the web though he eats uh, what about alphabet <laughs> letters as well. Alphabet oh. letters. Mm. Yes. Oh, Whenever they do the... Okay. It's not a purist mm, then. I watch Sesame Street because I can. Yeah, yeah. I can get away with it because I have a child and my child watches it. I don't need another excuse. I don't... Also, they tend to have really interesting guests. But every time they do the letter of the day, they do it with Cookie Monster. 
Mm. And oh. every single time Cookie Monster says that he wants, to, he thinks it's a cookie, and then the little character that's doing the letter of the day with him explains, "No, Cookie Monster, this is not a cookie. This is the letter B." And then, or, he and then goes he for says, it and devours it. He says, I'm not going to eat it. I'm not going to eat it. I'm not going to eat it. And then by the end of the segment, he eats it. I think he's been doing that since 1969. Yeah. Uh, so he yeah. has a, a problem with delayed gratification. Yes. <laughs> he really That's does. Wow. Do a psycho, psychoanalysis on Cookie Monster. Right, right, right. You know, you know. So, I'm curious, yes. though, before we move on, I'm very curious because we're talking about Sesame Street now. I will not be derailed. <laughs> I would like to know who, what everyone's favorite Sesame Street character is. Yeah, yeah. Rom? Big Bird. Big Bird? Yeah. Mm. And why is he why? your favorite? Because he was played, so, because he was played by humans, and I thought, oh, right? Because he's good. moved by, like, the whole body. So yeah. I thought, hey, that's the coolest thing, because it's like the entire human, instead of, like, this finger, because I know, you know, all the tricks behind it. Yeah. And then, you know, this is this whole body, it's inside this Big Bird. It's pretty amazing. It's so. like uh, like C three PO was just this really skinny yeah, it's like guy, right? Really skinny dude. Stalking mm-hmm. this, you know, was what about R two D two? Yeah, he was. A, he was also a, a very guy. small man instead yep. of R two D two. Right. So that was that was as were the Ewoks. Yeah. Yes, yeah. also the Ewoks. So and people the in suits for the win. Yes, and Woo. Amber, what is your favorite Sesame Street character? Alex Snuffleupagus. I love Snuffy. Could you imagine riding Snuffleupagus? Like, you could have your own woolly mammoth rides forever. You, too, could have your own woolly mammoth ride. And is that the reason he's your favorite? No. It's just cool. Why is he your favorite? I have no idea. He just seems like he popped into my head. You know, I, you know, I didn't like the grouch because he was grouchy. Yeah. He was like that guy. You know, I just wanted to eradicate him. He was ruining the utopia. <laughs> well, you know, you... You gotta have U- Utopia the can't thing. exist because you right. have to have an Oscar the Grouch. Right, and so and, and so I, re- I had an ethical dilemma when yeah. I was little. Like I was like, but if you remove right and that whole that whole argument, so then so then it, I, I if decided you don't, I liked If you don't know him, sadness, right? how can you possibly know joy? Yeah. Right, the hot and the cold principle. Yes. Yeah. So then you know, snuffle off, I guess. It's pretty cool, but yeah. I, I don't know. I have no rationale really. There was the. Uh, did you ever see the the things they had an episode with a hallway of doors? And like you could go to any door. Oh yes, 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 I yes, 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 yes. I remember it. I vaguely segment, remember it. Right. And so I would pretend that all the doors in my house were like one of those doors, mm-hmm. and you could open, and it was an alphabet, an alphabet mm-hmm. letter, and you'd like fly around with the letter of the alphabet. Hey, like, Jim Henson. I mean, you know his history, right? Right. Yeah. Only <laughs> makes sense. Only <laughs> so, makes sense. So it was it was pretty fun. So like, I, I wish that a character would be a door, and that I would like the door the best. That's a good. That's a good answer as well. What about you? What is your favorite To me, character? it's a tough call. I, I'm i going to say my second favorite. I'll tell you my second favorite okay. first is Wormy. Wormy! Wormy. That was an incredible... It was like an inchworm. It's a little inchworm. So and he hung out with small. Oscar. Yeah. And he was the only thing that Oscar loved. And so as much as Oscar irritated me, and it was the, I had the same kind of dilemma. It was if Oscar wasn't there, everyone could be happy all the time. But if Oscar wasn't there, then uh, all you how you know how would they manage? But then he had this little inchworm wormy, and he loved him so much. And now at the end of, of it, there was a season or two at the end of every episode, they changed the ending by season. He would read wormy a bedtime story. I never knew about this. Yeah, yeah, I think I remember. Gordon that. played Trash Gordon, and they were all a Trash Gordon story, and he was like an intergalactic. Explorer, and so at the end of every episode, Oscar would read Wormy a story about Trash Gordon, which was Gordon from the show dressed up in this like outrageous costume with like <laughs> mops wow. as epaulets and uh, mops. And God, I just always absolutely loved Wormy, yeah. and it was it was partly because I just you know he could never say anything, so I could always imagine what it was that Wormy was going through and what Wormy was thinking, and there were no absolutely no limits on Wormy aside from the fact that he was sure. a worm. Worms. So now I'm going to switch. I'm going to say that Wormy is actually my favorite character because so I've just convinced so myself. So what is then your second? My second favorite character is Grover. Very nice. Oh, Chris Grover. Because I think that Grover is the sweetest and most loving of all of the Muppets on Sesame Street. Mm, totally is. He just really seeks to make everyone happy. happy. He's like the anti-Oscar. He is the dun, anti-Oscar. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
So and then now he's got the Super Grover persona as well, which is just you know, yeah, like, yeah, like the personification of of all of his personality traits. And it, now he can fly and go from yeah. all over the world helping people. This seems like the show is pretty balanced because you have like antithesis and like thesis and everything, and so it's all very balanced. It's like a world, it's right? It's really, really, yeah. really, really well so thought out. The whole out. system is set, and there's no gaps, and then therefore everyone can watch and feel like they're having a complete reality instead of some shows which only present like two parts mm-hmm. of a reality, and then it just it just. Fizzles. I think Sesame Street doesn't. <laughs> we're gonna talk, I can't believe we're just gonna. Say I love it. Sesame Street, but that's okay. I really think that go on, go on. Sesame Street presents, <laughs> as you were saying, a really well balanced view of the world for children because they're not sitting there looking at it and seeing everything's perfect all the time. Yeah. And I, so I hate for my daughter to see something and think that everything's perfect and then walk into her everyday life, and and. Uh, this doesn't happen on Sesame Street. Why am I? Why is this? I'm miserable. This is horrible. This bad thing happened. So and so wasn't nice. On Sesame Street, that's dealt with. Yeah, right, right. They both want to play with the ball. They both found it. It's my ball. No, it's my ball. No, it's my ball. Let's it's work a, it out. It's kind of a, a cultural history thing. Yeah. Like instead of a grandmother being in the house saying, "Hey, one time there was this ball and blah blah blah," and here's an outcome. Yeah. It, it's outsourced to a. a a, a centralized television station that is portraying this, this cultural mm-hmm. truths to everyone that everyone yeah. goes through what? to replace that deceased sort of exactly. aspect of community that was once there. I also like that they've retained the same sense of community that they had before because that m- is correct. many of the characters, until the actors passed away, have stayed on the show. And two of the characters got married like in the 70s or 80s. And I think they got married on the show, and now their daughter is on the show. Wow. Oh. Yeah. Nice. So one of the things that I remember from Sesame Street, the best, was the uh, was the song. It was 12. Remember the 12? The song about 12? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Yeah. Yeah, love it. dude, that was brilliant. I, I know. love that like song. It's such a brilliant animation piece. And then um, some of the best... Um, like stop motion, not stop motion, time lapse. Was yes, the oh, time Sesame lapse Street. stuff on yes, Sesame yes. Street was amazing with that kid standing on one side of the field and then they right. would just like time lapse him across the field and yeah. it was awesome. so cool. It was really like I was reading a book on the history of animation and it was one of the, like the big breakthroughs that this guy just got to, you know, here you have some airtime, just experiment like mad, yeah. have a good time and he's like, okay, I'll do this and I'll do this and then, it, you know, over time it evolves and you get this amazing amazing series of like time lapse that everyone else is like time lapse cool yeah they've done some Try amazing this. stuff on sesame street through the years it's like the ability to make a mistake and make something that's like not professionally done for Fail a, harder. a while right? yeah and it's like kind of like you know youtube you can do the same thing but like this was like a really enriched community environment in which you were allowed to make a mistake kind of like you know the tech scene in portland like you can make a, a silly so. mistake it's silly whatever but everyone's like, well, it's okay. Let's you pick can, it up and yeah, carry it on. Move along. Right, yeah. here's some incentive. Have a, have a good, yeah, you know, or whatever. And it's nice. Yeah. It's very nice. I came Sesame back, Street. and you're still talking about Sesame Street. <laughs> <laughs> we, we Much like to the chat room's dismay. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, really? Are they dismayed? Hey, come on. We apologize. Oh, chat room. Yeah. Please don't Didn't be dismayed. Didn't you love me telling you why Wormy is the best character on Sesame Street? Do they have a favorite uh, character? Are, yeah. You, does the chat room have a favorite character? No, they don't. <laughs> um, moving on. Um, so we talked. So did we talk about what? So other than Sesame Street, not much. No, no. I want to know really? about. We so, talked about Sesame so Street. So you're on an adventure, Amber, living in every quadrant of this city. Yeah. So I started in Southwest. I, I did a, a short one to to Selwood for three months, and I went back to Southwest. But now I'm in Southeast. And next month I'll live in Northeast. I want to live in St. John's at some point. And um, I hear the people like St. John's. Yeah. Gotcha. What do you do? yeah I'm, I'm very excited to live in St. John's. And then um, and then I'll end in Northwest. Um, Which is downtown. Yeah, and I'll go to North at that point. So it'll be it'll be kind of a circle. So <laughs> Southwest, mm-hmm. Southeast, like Northeast, Northeast, North, the north. and then North Northwest. And then I'll have like a loop, and then. See what each environment is, you know, makes you conduce to yeah. do whatever, you know. It's so interesting. Just, just a sort of environmental experiment. And so, That's interesting. So, are you a nomad as far as work, 
school or, or do you actually have to go in generally some is there a location, location that you have to be every day uh well three days a week i work at, at blue tech uh-huh. and i do like seo and email marketing mm-hmm. it's really awesome and they're really great people um and then in the other time like thursday i meet people like then you're all over. Just schedule all, all sorts over. of appointments and like meet all sorts of interesting people. Five meetings a day, <laughs> not impossible. Wake up at six thirty in the morning. I wake up at six thirty in the morning. It's definitely the earliest. Generally. Sleep at three thirty. That six makes th- that makes my brain hurt. Yeah. Cause I, I have to wake up during six thirty during the school year, but <laughs> oh no, six thirty. No, because I noticed that after twelve, right? Mm-hmm. Amber has this thing where she would get into high gear and she would start like messing around and hacking WordPress plugins, mm-hmm. and I think that's the coolest thing. Cause who else? Had an had an urge of you know wake up one day and say hey I am going to hack WordPress after twelve p.m. It just it just something happens. It's the, <laughs> yeah. the WordPress werewolf thing starts. You know it's like full moon. Ah, like anthropy. <laughs> like anthropy. So yeah. so Brom, what are you working on after twelve a.m. other than Twitter? <sighs> after hours. Come okay, on, okay, come on. Okay. Oh wait, this is where we get to say. Rom, I heard you promise to explain After Hours and how it came to be. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, 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 After Hours. So, um, so I don't know, maybe it was three or four months ago. Um, I always have been working past 12 anyway, right? Mm-hmm. Because I am not a morning person. I would prefer to wake up ideally at 10, you know, That's it never nice happens, spot. never yeah. happens. Always, yeah. But anyway, I always stay up at night. And then I, you know, one day I think, you know, hey, people, you know, do this every day. And it's not just me because I find that, you know, Nate Angel do this, G. Walter do this, Rosie do this, and almost everyone do it. And I was like, you know, maybe they love what they do so much so that, you know, they don't stop, right? Because if you love what you do so much, then, you know, work becomes play and play becomes work. And, you know, it's, it's this well, what one. What are you doing other than watching the Twitter stream go by and having your eyes open thinking, I really should go to bed. I really should go to bed. <laughs> no, that's what you really, do at midnight. Oh, my God. Did you see that conversation go by? Oh, oh, I got to check this thing online. Oh, my God. Oh, oh I got to listen to this podcast. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. This I would actually, be the Dr. Normal plan for after hours. Oh, okay. Yeah. So after hours came as, uh, you know, a way to acknowledge, you know, here's the way to say, here's to you, late night workers. We're with you. And try to build like a pseudo communi- community. And then, you know, all the regulars start coming Are in. Are you able to a- concentrate? I am. Actually, I am. Yeah. I, I, I do turn my Twitter off. So the way oh. it works is, oh, yeah, yeah, I know. Surprise. Is that right? the 2 a.m. when all of a sudden I don't see any of your tweets anymore? Yeah, 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 yeah. So I would usually tweet about five or ten tweets and respond to everyone. And then I would turn it off and go back to work for like 30, 45 minutes. And then I would go back in again. Mm. So that's yeah. sort of the trick. Yeah. Oh, so it's you like the sleeping thing. thing. It's like the polyphasic sleep, but with, <laughs> right. but with Twitter. Yes, it's polyphasic yes, you're right. tweeting. When you're not polyphasic on Twitter, you're, tweeting. You're, you're, yes. Yeah. I do polyphasic tweeting as well. Then. Yeah. Cool. It's what is it? An evolution, punctuated equilibrium, or something like that, instead of gradualism, where you're just mm-hmm. like burst and then like just burst, sh- burst, and then burst. That's that's completely my Twitter style. Blah 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 blah. Yeah, and then, and then like silence. radio silence it's kind for of a while. Nice. It works very well. Yeah, that radio like silence to me is called work. <laughs> yeah, a job. <laughs> a job. Job. Yeah. Well, occasionally. Occasionally. Yeah, that got me thinking. Occasionally, you tweet from work. Are, are you? Yes. Are you? Are you? I, uh, still, I told our friend that if he are you still was doing the poly- polyphasic sleeping. Or whatever that is. No, no, not anymore. Or I as I call it, it anymore. induced narcolepsy. <laughs> <laughs> Very appropriate, Dr. Normal. No, I think when I first met you, you were like, so uh, I wake up at, what, what did you do? You stayed up till four, then you would wake up at eight, and then you would go to sleep at five so to like for, nine, and yeah, then like, yeah, that yeah, was yeah. the craziest. Like, it actually, like, it's a kind of a normal schedule of like, I don't like people uh, on a crazy submarine, people? right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that are going to the Arctic Ocean. Actually, and that is a good analogy. It is kind of submarine hours, right? Submarine yeah, hours. Yeah. You're, well, you're, you're in a pod, pod, right? On so a you're... submarine, though, there's no night or day. On a submarine, everyone works and sleeps in shifts. So you've got, I think they said it was three shifts. Right, right. That you've got, you know, a third of the of the crew is awake at this hour, and you cycle through, and they have, you know, meal times together, sleep times, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, but in waves. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's well, totally. what I did was called biphasic, right? Because polyphasic is multiple. It's poly. So bi was two. So what I would do, right? Just for clarification for everyone, I don't do this anymore, right? 
at the info bar has been telling me to like has been urging me to like if you want to live longer and you don't want to get in trouble when you're 40 start sleeping he's a very smart guy yes. Yes. he's a very yes. smart guy is. oh my gosh yes, yes. totally yes. sleep but, equals good but by basic means that i'll sleep at 3 th- about 3 or 3 30 a.m for four hours wake up at 7 30 or 8 and then again i would sleep at 4 or 4 30 p.m and then wake up at 7 30 or 8 30. that's why if i go to meetups you know i usually don't sleep or you would probably notice me as being very very tired because it is literally my nap time wow or if you're watching a guy doing a drum solo at a party yeah. and you're asleep no i wasn't asleep <laughs> Mom. Not he not was fl- resting flicker. his eyes just resting I, I love it because it was right after pitches me and I'm thinking, wow, you know. It's like hula hoop, hula hoop, hula hoop, hula hoop. Oh, oh, it's passed on. Exactly. Uh, yeah, when I was little, I always wished I could stop time and then take an eight-hour nap and then redo time so that I wouldn't lose any of the 24 hours of the day. I, I had very similar so desires as a kid because I love sleeping so much. I love sleeping, but I also like what goes on. So right, for right. me, it's a big, like, God, do I really, like, lay down and, like, luxuriate in, in my sleeping time and curl up on my nice fluffy pillow. I love sleep. I love sleep. I love sleep more than anyone I know. And a lot of people are always like, Cammy, are you depressed? Because I love to sleep. Just for the sheer Just for the pleasure sheer enjoyment of, 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 of it. doing it. Yeah. I enjoy sleeping. You know, great. You're rested. Whatever. I enjoy sleeping. Yeah. I enjoy dreaming. I enjoy everything about sleeping. That's nice. I, I like it too. But, but like, I like the dreams. <laughs> I love mostly my dreams. just uh, dreams. Like you get to use more of your brain. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh, I've had such cool dreams. That are unused, like, by the way. That are usually unused during the day. You get to yeah, use it when you dream. So like dreams are what? amazing because it's stuff that you're thinking of, but it's stuff that you would never think to think of. Dude, so many problems get solved in dreams. Mm-hmm. Like, so I don't okay, know. I'm gonna just take a really quick detour on a complete geek moment. And what? this is just geek cred, geek, geek on, on. One of my favorite episodes of Star Trek: The Next Generation, <laughs> uh-huh. and and I'm a classic Trek fan. Was the one where Data gets the ability to, to dream. dream. Oh yeah, and, and he's, he's like flying paint- with a hawk. And Wasn't he painting crap. in one of his dreams? Yeah, yeah. And there was the whole oh, and, and then there was the cake, him, the and cake it was thing, just like, the cake yeah, thing. Yeah, oh yeah. god. I love that episode. Dude, Data you guys was total geek Data. moment. Dude, Data, Data and Jordy were like my favorite duo. Like, oh man, yeah. they were yeah, dude, yeah. That's a, I, I miss it. I like. Uh, I like. So, Star do you Trek. dream, Brom, when you do yeah, this? I, you know what? Dreams I about typography. <laughs> do you? No, I do it during the day. I identify. He identifies type fonts in his dreams. For example, the, that Vadoop font is uh, is Avenir. <laughs> so you know. Anyway, can you identify the font what? What on it? my on Avenir. my coffee mug? Avenir. Oh, nice. Avenir. Yeah, what's that font? Yeah, I don't know. I'm not so good on dun dun. Like strange. It's probably some kind of a gothic. So alternate gothic number two is probably the name, and it's been shifted. So <laughs> it's a mix. It's it is a mix. I I I mix the fonts because I don't like the eyes. Oh, uh-huh. she mixed it to stump you. Stump the topography expert. Uh huh. Um, it's stereophonic. Uh-huh. With Ariel thrown in. A hustler for a good Ariel turn in. Mm-hmm. Very tricky. Yeah. What is Brahms' favorite font? Ooh. <sighs> we need to like a song for this. What is Brahms' favorite font? Oh, da, 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 we da, did da. make a song about this. We did. We we're, were recording this song with Derek Wayne and just doing some piano noises, and then Brahm was going through all of his fonts. No, I was actually going through. So I opened <laughs> her font fonts, book wait. application. <laughs> I have like three thousand fonts. Yeah, but like in, in the history, you were saying the history of all the people behind the fonts and like yeah, the humanity. Because every font has a history. So I would say the name, for example, Ariel. Ariel was a da 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 da, and Baskerville mm-hmm. was a da 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 da. And yeah. Did you record it? We, we did, did record it and we never released it because it was but it was too big there were 400 of these fonts that made no sense and then 300 that were good so mm. but it took a long time we got what like we little to l, h or, letter h yeah, or l or something like that and we're like but we'll, we'll an hour. record it again <laughs> it'll, it'll, it'll be much more it'll yeah it'll be good. pick one from every letter of the alphabet Ooh, that's ooh, a great brilliant. idea. Six, uh, twenty-six yeah, biographies and then, uh, and then of I could, letters. And then I could tell. Yeah. Yes, that's a okay, good idea. It'll be, note it. It'll be great. Yes. Note Somebody, somebody, make a note of that so I can hear it. <clears throat> and yeah. I think I need. I think I said it was stereophonic, but I 
um, it's stereophidelic. I, I stereophidelic. Yeah. Stereophidelic. yeah. yeah. That's Correct like myself. psychedelic stereophonic. Yeah. I'm pretty sure uh, I've changed computers and my new computer doesn't have that font on it. So now I'm like, I got to figure out how I got yeah. that font in the first place so mm. I can have it. <laughs> but Mac has a lot of uh, excellent font. They, yes. I found that. I'm yeah. enjoying playing with my... I have uh, I've only made one piece using new fonts on my Mac and put it out because I've only did you use? I ma- I can't remember which font it was. It was Mac something. Okay, Mac something. Um, it's on my header. Mac. It's on okay. my. It's there's two separate fonts that are on my header. I have to look. Okay. And that was very exciting for me because I was like, God, I haven't picked a new font for my header since I first made a header. Yeah. Isn't that the over greatest feeling? Ago. You're refreshing your yeah, own it's like it's online very presence. Liberating. It was like. very liberating for me. And I find now looking at that and I don't know you know what what it is about it. I'm like, God, I think it's my favorite one. Right. It's like Ever. Go internet ahead. you're in like find your favorite. Two hundred places at once, you know, if you have that many profiles. But like mm-hmm. to update them all is like update it's like getting a new pair of shoes and they're all bright and shiny yeah. and like everyone knows that they're new you know yeah. and, and so you get this it's like awesome. hey I have this one I have this yeah. one but it's easy, easier to update online it's sometimes much easier to update yeah, than it is to get new shoes than buying a $140 whatever the heck's from <laughs> of course fonts does cost that you know for well, a good family. fonts yeah good but fonts, then you can yeah. always just email Brom and be like hey Brom do you have that cool font I mean <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> Brom can you recommend a good place that I can legally obtain that cool font yeah, there's so, a lot. Okay, so there's a go, lot. Yes. There's a lot of <laughs> places to obtain uh, legal fonts that are actually good. Right? Barely because legal fonts. Cami <laughs> <laughs> has to actually step away from the mic. Cami Gales did not do a spit take, but it was this close. This close, I'm telling you. Wow, this is getting, this is getting good. This is after <laughs> hours. <Fonterotica>. Like, <laughs> that was awesome. <sighs> So no no okay so you've told me some stories about fonts and, and one of the things that you have you have font specimen collections I do that, that are like do people you, do you keep them on slides <laughs> do you oh, put yeah. pins into them and <laughs> no I don't put them pins. to the board behind glass but I do collect them and font specimens are nothing but uh, things that people set with fonts at various sizes because back in the day when you can't test fonts when you have to like you know, actually lay them out on a letter press and press them onto paper before you can see it. I mean, you want to know how it's going to be set, right? So people assembled specimens, which are just lines of jabberwockies, of like nothings, printed on a sheet of paper. So it's, it's like that, that filler, right? That yeah, it's Latin filler. That filler that but you then, put in the website. But then people get really, really creative, and if they want, they can get really snarky with it. So there is an added irony to that, but mostly it's just for the enjoyment of looking at letter forms back when i only had like 30 or 40 fonts i would write them i would write something in each font i would do that and then yes, i would print yes, them out and yes. i would hole punch them and i had a binder with all my Ooh, fonts oh my god nice. yes. it was so exciting and now cool. i'm looking at the mac and i'm like god how long would it take me to right. do this and i'm yeah. seriously now i'm seriously contemplating it because i have a binder that's just Ooh. sitting there empty and Anyone who's been in my house and seen my binders might realize that I like my binders a little. Yeah. Nice. I love binders. Wow, binders are like compartments for your mind. They are. They're so and great. And it's like, oh, where's that? Yeah. yeah. I have a Pitch. binder of business card too. One mm-hmm. is for like venture, whatever, the secret. And then the other one is for like, you know, tech people. Yeah. And like, it's it's like Pokemon cards, yeah. right? So mm-hmm. you have the slots for the protecting things mm-hmm. and like, Tons, so many. So Did many. either of you have ever collect cards like baseball cards or Pokemon cards or Pokemon like cards. Star Wars cards or like the Tick Did, cards? Did you get the Tick? Magic the I, got have, the tick? I have the whole collection of the Tick. Oh my gosh! I'll let you see it. That's great. Okay. I would love to. It's, it's really nice. Oh wait, yeah, I think I have the whole thing. I have to look. I put it all in the binder and put it together. An, an old friend of mine, I don't know where he got them, but one day he gave them to me, like all in their little pouches, but organized and he was like it's the whole thing because he knew how much i loved the tick the full deck i'm pretty sure it's the full deck or if it's not it's the full deck up to a point but they didn't make that many we'll not pull very it out. familiar with yeah it. i had pokemon cards we had this thing called like pokemon tournaments uh-huh. I would, like, oh yeah pokemon them. tournaments and right. you would battle them you would you would battle but then i i looked at the catalogs and mm-hmm. i would look at the prices of each card and when it went up and down and i would like sell them and like oh, trade them yeah and like people would be like 
how much has how many points has this one gone up? And I'd be like, it's gone up two point six points. Get rid of it. You know, sell, sell, go, go, sell, go, go, go. sell, sell. Right. And then after a while, like the whole play, it was in a Tours of Rust too, and all of us were like ten or like whatever thirteen, and we'd all be in this frenzy where we'd like, you know, you could see the most active traders were in the middle, of right, course, crowded around course. the person with the most resources, and you'd like it was or the great. rarest card. It was nuts. Like I got this one like Mew Japanese card from Japan. It was like, Mew too. No, it was Mew. In, it was in, Mew? The, in the Japanese fossil I thought Mew too was that rare. I got from oh. Japan that was released way early, right? And it was like the only one that had ever like touched America, and like people went nuts. It was like s- super crazy. Who yeah. knew? I had to like hide it. It was. I have to ask because I'm not sure how old you guys are, but do you guys remember Garbage Pail Kids? The cards? Yeah. Did you have those? I didn't get no. cards, but I remember the ads the for. Yeah. Oh, I had the Garbage Pail Kids cards. Oh, the cards. Yeah, and they were great. Are they tradable? Love- yeah, they were tradable. I don't have uh-huh. them anymore. But they were like the tradable garbage pail kids cards. And I'm old enough that garbage pail pit. Garbage. <laughs> <laughs> Let's try that again, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'm old enough to remember that garbage pail kids meant the kids in the next neighborhood. So. Hey, oh. I have to ask. Uh, that was producer, a lot for that joke. Thank producer, you very much. Producer Doctor Normal, can you please uh, tell me? Do you know where the binder is that contains my ticket cards? Yeah. Uh yes. Is it easily retrievable? I believe so. <laughs> Do you think that we this could is get turning the, into like a card the intern turn. that you know? Yeah, let's get that. Maybe Melissa Lyons' intern will. I don't think Melissa Lyons' intern wants to be our intern. She's okay. her intern. Why not? It's such cool. You can push buttons. Yeah, you know what? Our intern would have door. to work late. Right. You could just you know instead of borrowing some sugar, you go next door and you borrow an intern. Yeah. Right. Knock knock knock. Listen. Excuse exactly. me. Can I borrow your intern? What did Miss Burroughs call it? Houseboy. Yeah, yes. she likes the houseboys. Houseboy. So okay, so back to trading cards. I'm wondering. <laughs> can you go find my trading my my tick cards? I want to show I'll my magic. T- the gathering. Oh, the no, no, no. Best I'm really I wondering. Can. Like, Thank you, baby. Trading cards and social groups. Yeah. Like uh, online, right? You're doing trading cards, right? You yeah. got to catch them all. Kind of not really, but like people who like obsess about getting fourteen thousand followers. Maybe it's got to catch them all, right? It's, it's maybe. A very Pokemon style. Very be like, I have to get the whole set of. Everyone in reality. I need to have every follower <laughs> on the planet. Right, right. Or every Portland followers, or every tech followers, right? right? So like, some, yeah. So Obama's doing a good job, and that's all I'm getting into politics. But yes. he's he is doing a yeah, good, good job getting the yeah. followers. Cool, getting yeah. the followers. Yeah. Okay. So our theory was that okay, if business card indeed is played like a trading card game, then we should probably analyze the stats and create some sort of a game system for it, right? Like uh, Google Analytics. Yeah, the account manager yeah. versus the creative director. No, right, like what what level is a person? If they're CEO, it's like level nine. And if they're like, you know, intern, it's level five. You know, and if they're in this industry, it's level this. And there are yeah. all different industries, right? So the fire industry would be what, like design and like tech industry would be like rock, right? Because they're sure. like making concrete structures and then like, you know, and they, you know, if you battle, blah, blah, blah. You, yeah, you, you know, get to you, battle you, you every make, industry. Yeah, it'll be very cool. Take the analogy cool. really far. You can have holographic ones that are really rare, like Jonathan Schwartz or like, you know, whatever you want. He has a holographic card. <laughs> Jonathan Schwartz has a holographic card. No, I'm just taking the analogy. Why, don't, why don't you just start with the Portland Twitter sphere? And make uh-huh. trading cards. I mean, yes, <gasps> yes, yes, yes. Oh my yes, god, yes. that is such a great idea. Them all. That is such a great idea. We should have trading cards of all the Portland Twitter peeps. Yes, not impossible. It's small enough, I think. No, it is. That would be no, such a fantastic project. But we already do. I mean, we have Twitter, but I guess we could make. Them I'll in trade reality. you my Bram Patoyo <clears throat> for and your my Don P Don P for your Tarosi. <laughs> Yeah, yeah Tarosi would be a star, and you would get him in like you know one in every ten packs, and uh, everyone would. Be you like, need rookie be cards too. You need rookie Ooh. cards too. Oh what would gosh. they? What, what would a rookie card be? You know, know, someone new to Twitter, just kind of you know. Oh, one of the like, and you'd have spam cards that you wouldn't want to get. Spam for cards. Oh, the spam cards. But interns are really good. Like the collab interns are awesome. Are like the they're amazing. So they don't count. That's right. They count as like at least diamonds, right? Because diamonds are uncommon, stars mm-hmm. are really rare, mm-hmm. white stars are super rare. <laughs> You're confusing him. Wait a minute. And it's like great into Pokemon, isn't it? Are, <laughs> I, know, this I, is the only, I know nothing this, of Pokemon. This is the only I don't know index I have. This is the only trading card that I got into. My, my favorite. I'd like, I'd like to know if there's any interest my. in making the Portland people of Twitter just as long cards. as it's not like yes. Pokemon. Shut I have, there's one. Is there there's any one. Uh, Mark Coleman is interested in having everyone in for a photo shoot to take a really nice avatar picture, and that could be the slapped onto the trading card. I right? have to say, I've been to both of his websites. He's got one that's a more professional website, which 
I think I can't remember what it linked off of. And I was like, I went to it. And I was like, oh, those are really nice photos, but it wasn't really what I was expecting. And then I looked at his business card and I saw that the website was different. And I went to his other website and I was absolutely floored. He's a he's an amazing artist. Yes. Oh amazing. yeah, totally. he is. Yeah. Okay. That's what I'm going to say. Is, is yeah. He, I was just going to say. He had this Scoot one that was a woman nice. with a leaf. Dude, and that one is amazing. Yeah, yeah. you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. And the one with the spiky porcupine. And it's not oh. Photoshop. Dude, yeah, and right? it's not Photoshop, it's right? Not, it's no, not it's Photoshop, not. Right? It's no, it's not. Photoshop. It's totally not. legit. It's sweet. Like, he's, like, he took a, he did a photo shoot uh-huh. of me and, like, turned it to Cyborg. Uh-huh. And, um, was that a Photoshop? Just no? Re- no, it was not Photoshop. It was an overlay. You know that, that oh. camera that he has around his neck? Yeah. He has, like, nine of them up on this little shelf, like, nine different types. Uh-huh. And he takes these, like, beautiful... They're not black and white. They're slightly sepia tone. Uh-huh. They're slightly like the old style. And he took a bunch of those and like, oh man. And the way that he did it, you know, he had all the professional equipment. It was like really awesome and like really fun. I don't know. Like, it's it's just cool. Like he's, the way that he just amazing. Does yeah. it? His, you know? his stuff is absolutely amazing. And have you watched his uh, video? Oh, I haven't. It's on my to do list. I saw yeah. that he just had another one come out. Yeah. And it's on my. I'm hoping to sit down on Saturday um, while Doctor Normal has band practice, yeah. and and watch some of them. Yeah. Yeah. And he was known for at uh, the uh, beginning part, right? It was the uh, yo, yeah, yo, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mark Coleman's yo, 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 <laughs> yo, 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 like that, right? Yo, 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 yo. And right? Then Cram Namlock, which is his name. Yeah, yeah, Mark yeah, Coleman. Coleman. yeah. It's great to put your name backwards. And then, so then he he will criticize your photos. So if you send him your photos, he'll be like, "This one sucks. I'm gonna teach you how to take a better photo, yo." And then like you know, he like shows a photo and oh he's like, God. "Crop it here, yeah, because it sucks, yeah, whatever." And like, but he does the accent so well that. That it's really awesome. What's going on with our microphone? Nothing. Ooh. It was it was okay. It's I wonder fine. what my Ignore. name would be backwards. It would be iMac. iMac. Oh my god. Oh. Am I wrong? C A M I I M A C. No. It I-Mac. is iMac. I-Mac. Wow. Yeah. I-Mac. Cool. Yeah. Very nice. Hey, what's, what's, what's chaos? What's the dupe back- backwards? So <laughs> No. 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 Pudim. <laughs> 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 You, you realize he's going to be on the show in Next two week. weeks, and maybe not so much. Make fun of his company name, and in two weeks he'll be like, "Oh yeah, I'm busy. Sorry. Nice work." Okay, okay. That's almost as funny as when I spit. I didn't. Sp- oh, yeah, mark that, that longest laugh in Strange Love Live history, right there. Oh, I know. It's like a really bad HTML. <laughs> um, that's one for the be- next best dub show right there. Um, <laughs> good time. <It's> lovely. <laughs> good time. Sheep thrills. Sheep what thrills. What is Brom? Brom backwards. It's Marb. 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 Oh, I like that. Marb. Yeah, that's, Marb. That's pretty nice. Yeah, um, kind of reminds me of Marv. I, like, I always like Marv. Oh, Marv the Martian. Marv, Marv. Marv the Martian. It's yeah. better than Marble Lights. I can never pronounce that name. Marble. Marble Lights? <laughs> Marble. Marmalite? No. Mar- Marmalade? The cigarettes. Marlboro. Mar- oh, Marlboro. Mar- 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 Marlboro. Marlboro. We're not advertising cigarette smoking is bad for you. It's like Toblerone, okay. right? So at the end. Toblerone. There we go. Mm. Toblerone. Better product Toblerone. So did, did we yeah. talk about where you guys grew up? Where each of you... No, no but it doesn't matter. Yes, it Marlboro, does. Marlboro. And, what, no, you, <laughs> and <laughs> what brought you to Portland or if you're okay. here in Portland? Okay, so, so I was born in Salt Lake City. I'm not Mormon. Okay. And then <laughs> first, you have to one clarify of the first that. Seven yeah. people yeah. born in Salt Lake City. There's right. A lot. There's, a lot. <laughs> there's, there's quite, but but, but all my ancestors amount. were, and I'm related to like Donnie and Marie, and did these crazy. Nice. You know, this is this is right. So then, yeah. then six months later, are you a little bit country or a little bit rock and roll? <laughs> Both. Okay. Um, no, moving just, on. Actually, don't listen to about. This is rock. Anyway, so then we moved to Denver. And uh, I lived in a suburb by the foothills yep. and went to school. I went to Catholic school and Lutheran school and public school and 10,000. Yeah. And um, and then, like, 15 schools in all, like, a certain sort of... Go on. Okay. Moving on. So then... A so then sort uh, of... Yeah, so, so you went to Catholic school and Lutheran school. And public school. It's like kind of like what I did. Fifteen different schools, right? And, right. And, and after a while, you start to see like different social groups like repeat. So like, I really got interested in sociology because I saw mm-hmm. an intersection of like so many different types of people, right? How about religion? And totally religion and, yeah. too, yeah. right? I was Unitarian, Presbyterian, Baptist, Lutheran, Catholic, 
Yeah, I think almost make a song with it. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. 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 And then, uh, and then, you know, my dad, he was getting all these patents at the time because he likes to get patents, and he was cool. like, "I need a company to work for so I can get patents." Mm-hmm. So we worked for Quest, and they paid for some patents, and it was like, "Yeah." And then he was like, "I have a midlife crisis," so then we moved to Wyoming. It was awesome. Really, Wyoming was awesome. Yeah, because there was a tech community there. We had like LAN parties. We had hackers. Oh, of course, had, LAN like, parties. So okay. oh, where, where was this in Wyoming? In Cheyenne, Wyoming. In Cheyenne, so kind of in the larger city area yeah out in wyoming yeah fifty thousand people the capital yeah. of wyoming yeah and 50, we're driving fifty thousand people fifty thousand people yeah yeah it's, it's in five hundred thousand in the state that's and, not uh, a lot of people <laughs> yeah i went up there for like in the middle of high school it was it was yeah. intense and so and then after that i was like oh i should go to college but i was obsessed with like going to the perfect college and like getting whatever grades uh-huh. and and then i was like well what if i just you know take the oregon trail seriously like that yeah. The computer game. So you have like, died of dysentery? Right. I've died of dysentery. So then I went up to, to Portland. I said, what's the complete opposite of Wyoming? I was like, I'll go to Portland. And I visited a college. I was like, I'll go to this college. And it ended up being Lewis and Clark. Lewis and, Clark and, right. and there was a cyborg anthropology teacher. And I was like, yeah, yeah. And like five days in, I was like, oh, I'm totally an anthropologist. Okay, cool. Yeah. I'm done. I declared the major and whatever. So th- that's actually the major, the cyborg. Yeah. Well, it's it's so a cool. anthropology major. I right. It, anthro- a with the, and, yeah. Yeah. And sociology, wow. sociology and anthropology. So. They didn't have that major one. <laughs> yeah, anthropology. yeah this is, I wish. I, I, I but that was a long time ago. Say what? But they Sci- totally have it. You see like, the Apple IIs we have in the physics department? No, yeah, no, yeah, oh, please. Yeah. yeah. It's not two, isn't it? It's that character. You know the pipes? You Never mean a, a Roman numeral? So it's not the Roman numeral. If you look at it closely, it's like the pipes character. Oh, okay. Whoa. Turn gotcha. sideways. So it's like oh, right. this, okay. right? Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Just to be like typographically yeah. correct. Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, Steve Jobs studied calligraphy at Reed. Of course. Yes, he did. Just down the street here. Just down, down the street. street. Yeah, yeah, we just went by there today. I was like, from you got to see Reed College. And there yeah. was a sunset. Of Steve course. Jobs. That's sunset right. this afternoon was beautiful. That's right. Yeah. So rhododendron gardens next door there. Rhododendron. Yeah, that's Chrysanthemum. right. Chrysanthemum. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, start churning out names. Uh, you so, can't. It's all so, so you, Lewis and Clark, you finished up, and and you're you're you're, you're I mean, you're just hanging out. I'm, I'm two months out of college. I was like, well, I want to use my degree. Wouldn't it be ironic if I actually like yeah. s- super used my degree? So I was like, what's the thing that matches? Well, search engine optimization. Yeah, very much so. You know, like human computer interaction, web design. You know, like B two B commerce, site design you know social media like expanding online presence like all these things match right so right. and stranger in a strange land by heinlein talks about anthropologists so i was like hey it's cool and bloggers and so i was like oh this is a good major like it'll totally work ironically enough it's like the most sci-fi major after all isn't like is it harry selden from the foundation oh, series yeah, wasn't Isaac he Asley? like a mathematical <clears throat> anthropologist he totally or something because he was had actually mathematically you know, created yeah. the the fall of the the Galactic Empire. He was a, a psycho historian. Psycho historian. Yeah. That was it. This yeah. is so I would like a lot of um, genetics are are similar to search engine results. So like you uh-huh. use there's like these mathematical equations called Markov chains, and you use them to find you know to Markov chains. Mar M A R K O V chains. Yeah, mm-hmm. Markov chains, and I think they're used in Google search results, and they're also used in genetics. To find missing genetic material from like, here's, oh, okay. you know, here's this, and right. here's this, and right. there's a gap. Yeah, when you're doing a sequence, yeah, and you, you right. have to fill in the gap. Yeah, right. especially because anthropology, when you're trying to sequence a, a, you know, brontosaurus, you know, genome or something like that, right? Right, right. So then, so then genetics and search become very similar, and there, there are all these, you know, mm-hmm. things that are going on. So like, and and Harry Selden with psychofuturism or psycho history, yeah, yeah, the foundation series, yeah. he was, um, he was using this to fill in the gaps and project it forward because every exactly. every variable is the same. It's just manifest differently. Like all the the laws of physics are always the same. They're just manifested differently. So if you take the trajectory and like plot it on a line, you, you can, can see exactly what the future plot in the will look like. So at certain times I've been able to like, you know, calculate so, it out. So I mean, when I was a kid and I read that, I was just like, "Wow, that that's crazy." I wonder, right. you know, and and I, are we we're closer and closer oh, to that, right? Yeah, because like I mean, a lot of like, I mean, Asimov is arguably a decent writer, right? You know, I mean, and he he himself said, "Yeah, you know, don't image too much in my brain. I just 
put something on the page. But he's a fascinating writer. He writes a fascinating story, and you know he's one of the old guard of science fiction. Right? He's written Shining under Clark, yeah. Heinlein, you know, and uh, but but the the you know predicting that 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 um, you know it, it, those things like I mean I, I remember. I remember my seventh grade teacher going, yeah, I love the fact the guy's got like a little handheld computer. Well, you know, it's like someday maybe we'll have handheld computers. Who knows? Maybe there'll be an Encyclopedia Britannica or a Google.com. Or a Wikipedia. Yeah. Exactly. Or Wikipedia. And so, you know, I actually had the fortune of taking some science fiction. There was a science fiction class. Like one of my professors. There's also a very good one at at Portland State, by the way. Oh, nice. Years ago. Yeah. Okay. But it was it was sixth grade, right? And my yeah. teacher said, okay, well, then the teacher did science fiction. And one of the stories, we read all these stories that ended up happening in the future, right? So before eBay, you know, there, there was this little kid. It was a story of this little kid's 10th birthday. And he's like, okay, it's my 10th birthday. Let's get a bike. Okay, and his parents are like, okay, what kind of bike do you want? And he's like, well, you know, and he's like using the little interface on the fridge. And he's like, well, I want a red bike. And it, and it fits my, you know, my height and my weight. Cool. And, uh, and he hits click, you know, and, uh, orders the bike. Right. And, and so he's, it's done, you know, it's for his 10th birthday. And then, uh, suddenly he stops and he's like, mom, dad, where do bikes come from? Like, can exactly. we see where they are made and like what happens? And his parents are like, what? I, oh yeah. In the past you would, you would go to a storefront and you do this thing called shopping <laughs> and you'd walk in and you'd touch the bike and see what they had in stock and you you know you'd figure it yeah, out and but people still stand in line for a week do you do you really think that's yeah. do you think that's really good? i mean because a lot of my purchases i like to make online like a cd or software or a book even i like to purchase online but clothing right a bicycle right. um appliances and who knows i like to like, touch them and feel them and try them on and so i think that that market will become like super local like the clothing market, like you know, you walk down on British streets, like it's very super local. Like yeah. you're touching these handmade things, or like you know, produce or something like that. But something far away and distributed, like you, you know, you'll probably buy music from whatever. But it won't be in the form of a CD, and it won't take a long time to get to you. It'll just be downloadable, like the things that That's have coming sooner rather than later. I think. Yeah, yeah like yeah, infinite it's already copies. Already happening. Like, yeah. You know, so so what are the lightest things? those will be like very global and what are the non-light things those will be very local and there'll be just differentiation point in which things are downloaded or not downloaded localized or non-localized localized or not localized that's correct so so i want to get back to background so brahm okay you're here in portland okay. what yeah i mean did you grow up here where did you <laughs> 22 years ago okay so utah <laughs> Wyoming, oh, fifty thousand people, sure. Nebraska, land party. Land Actually, party. that's funny exactly. because she had a land party. Because my first, what got me first into computer was that when I was uh, seven, no, it was like eight to ten years old. Uh-huh. I played the game uh, Dune Two. Oh. It was the very first strategy game, right? Real time strategy game, like Dune, as in Dune. Frank Herbert. Yeah, Frank Herbert, Atreides, nice. Harkonnen, Ordos, right? Yeah. Well, that kind of thing. So, oh, deep. Yeah, Sorry, I can't resist. <laughs> yeah. Actually, a I think on a on a former episode of Strange Love, the pain box. Brom was our Dune expert. Fire. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. I am a Dune and a Middle Earth expert. And 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 can I? I, I gotta say, <laughs> no matter <laughs> how much the producers screwed it up, you know David Lynch and Frank Herbert, what a match made in heaven. That was awesome. The visuals in that movie. <laughs> I mean, it was a screwed up movie, yeah, but yeah. the visuals were amazing. It was amazing. And only David Lynch can. You know, just he's one screwed up. Guy. I think we could have an entire episode to discuss David yeah. Lynch. Look, it's a Dune. screwed up. It's brilliant. I have David yes. Lynch's earliest films on a DVD. Yes, Ooh. they are so intense. Yes, they, they are. are so intense. Okay, the end. But, but Brom. Dune. But Brom. Okay, my but Brom. we're going to revisit that. Experience. Dune, Brom, <laughs> Brom, Dune, pain <laughs> amplifier, land parties. Yeah. Go. My very first experience dealing with computer was I played this strategy game called Dune, and then I. I keep losing because I am not good at playing games, right? So I keep losing, and then uh, I thought, hey, what if I had more spice, right? The currency was spice. Spice, absolutely. What if I have more spice so I can build more harvester and, you know, just do that kind of thing and build more armies and just crush my enemy? So I started editing the game resource files, (laughs) and I start hacking it and changing the value, right? Mm -hmm. I would save the game, I would edit the file and find out, you know, if I have like 9,000 spices, then I would find the 9,000 value and replace it with, you know, 25,000 or something like that. Can you do the spice rap from, from, I mean, it's not the rap, it's the, actually the rap from Dune. 
the, from the you know the spice yeah. the little prayer that yeah. that they do. Oh well, <laughs> you know no, the no. spice. Yeah, 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 like yeah, yeah. Spice. Yeah. Just, okay. No. But anyway, the game crashes. I yeah. don't think it was the spice gives us life. Isn't it's the some, spice I, I, is life? The spice is I life. Yeah, remember. the spice I is think life. So. Check I can't the remember. chat. Maybe they'll have the spice. Oh, they'll figure it out. Yeah. yeah. My eyes, my eyes turned blue. Yeah. Exa- yeah, exactly. <laughs> now I gotta watch go. Dune. Oh, oh yeah, I totally. need to watch Dune again. The Dune Knight. The which, Twitter which Dune Knight. That's you right. Seen, you've seen the new version. I think it was no. for sci-fi. No. Yeah, sci-fi did a miniseries. Yeah, sci-fi did. They did one. It was pretty good. Oh, yeah? I mean, when my mom was in town recently, she watched the old Dune, the whole God, thing, the old Dune was a movie. and then the next night she watched the whole new Dune. <laughs> Did, was that weird? The old and new Dune, 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 Dune. Um, sorry. Um, she. <laughs> <laughs> Soundtrack by Toto. I, 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 really I believe what she said was that she preferred the production value of the of the newer Dune, but that the casting and the character portrayal of the original Dune was spot on. Yeah. I really oh, miss Paul the Sci-Fi Channel. Man. They had they had the Outer Limits. Did you ever watch the, oh, Outer, the, Limits? Outer, the Limits, Outer Limits? Yeah. Each time you had a different like space and time uh-huh. segment, and the nif- different physics happened, and it was great. I it was love just the Outer Limits. Brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. I think Dr. Norman wants to know where so, Brahm is from. Okay. <laughs> so, Brahm is so from Indonesia. Land, go, land, go land parties, <laughs> Dune. And land parties. Your eyes are turning blue. Yeah, and uh, so about land parties, but that bit, I used to play, uh, I used to be really good at StarCraft. Just so you know, I will okay. challenge you to a StarCraft match. All right. And Okay, but anyway, I, I, I grew up in uh, Indonesia, right? It Whereabouts? Was a, uh, it's, it's a city called uh, Surabaya, which is an hour away from the capital, Jakarta. Jakarta, yeah. Right? And uh, 45 minutes uh, of, of a flight away from Bali. I don't know, everyone wants oh. to go to Bali. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you're... Actually, your best bet is to actually come with a local because then you'll know where to go and what to eat and where to buy, and then you'll be okay. Sure. So, uh, yeah, so that's it. You know, it's extending an invitation. If you want to go to Bali, just pay me a ticket. And then, oh, here uh, we go. <laughs> buy Brahm a ticket. Actually, so that's Brahm's around. new Twitter adventure. It's uh, Adventures in Bali by Brahm. Yeah, Whoa. exactly. Yeah, the, the new Twitter touristry industry is hey, about Twitter to start touristry. because you can connect to Twitter your touristry. potential blah 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 exactly. very quickly and efficiently twitter touristy is it available twitter touristy twitter touristy.com god that's really <laughs> no, bad no. it's an api oh, no. a global api with google earth integrates whenever someone's okay yeah it's and it'll shot cool. your location in right. real time yeah, it's a, it's no a all i'm thinking is that wasco wee wabbit <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know yeah, have there been enough time twisters far. tonight for you exactly exactly so good. then you so then magically transported to portland no yeah. <laughs> well, He's a I teleporter. In, no, I moved here for my, uh, what's it, sophomore or senior? Senior high school year. Sophomore, either sophomore or senior high school year. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, and then on, and then I decided Where to continue uh, at this little, let's see if you can remember the name. You know, if you pass by Northeast, I think it was called like Temple Christian School or something. So huh. if you go but to in the Portland. Northeast. In Portland, yeah. right? Yeah. So if you go from the yeah. airport and take the highway, you see the domes, yeah. right? The the yellow domes. Or they, they, they call it the nuclear lab. And for the, the right reason, because it does look like a nuclear uh, lab. Uh-huh. So that was the church, right? Nuclear lab, one of the Christian dome, school. Excellent name. So one of the domes was the church. <laughs> call it. The other dome right. is a school, and I went to that school. Oh, okay. okay. Now, was it a foreign exchange program, or did you just make the conscious decision to come here to go to school? Made a conscious decision, actually... Um, Several family members live here, mm-hmm. and oh, cool. then you know I thought, hey, you know, would it, yeah. you know, wouldn't it be cool to, you know, sort cool. of live here? I hated it. At really? First, I really hate. It. I mean, the weather. Come on, I'm wearing shorts and flip flops. Yeah, Mr. And, Bali, right here. Yeah. yeah. Screw shoes. What's yeah, exactly? Flip-flops. Yeah. So hated the weather, but then I guess Portland is a place that you kind of, you know, grown well, to you love. You seem to really love Portland. I mean, you seem to. Yeah, you know, you kind of get that. Yeah, I think it grew on me. And I think that's what the sentiment that a lot of people shares, right? Because I talk to a lot of people who moved here uh-huh. from somewhere else and, you know, they always hated LA. it. But then there's that, you know, there's that love-hate relationship of ultimately this is the reason why I like it. And right. a lot of it is the same reason, right? It's the community and it's the thing. Uh-huh. It's the thing. and The people. Yeah, the it, people. it, it takes a while to uh, integrate. But once you're there, like, then it's, you're set. Then it's right. great. And yeah. it's great. When and I, then, yeah. When I moved to Portland, I completely different experience I, I visited Portland when I was 16 and from that point on when I went and then I went home three days later and I was like I must live in Portland at some point 
I wanted to be here. I yeah. wanted to be here so badly. And about a year and a half later, I moved to Portland. What was what was the allure for you? I mean, it's just three days, right? I came up to visit my boyfriend. Uh, and who was going to? Who was going to Lewis, Lewis and Clark, Clark College? Yeah, Wait visiting, a minute, that's how I came to Portland to visit your boyfriend who was going to Lewis and Clark College. And I visited for three days. And then for, I, oh, yeah. are you serious? And yeah. then you were like, I have to move to Portland. Yeah, and then that I went to Lewis. So America. awesome. Yeah, that's creepy yeah, that's, and that's awesome. Very strange. I so, how did you years. like it immediately when you came? <laughs> well, yeah, I did, and and then and then I went, and then it was kind of jostly, and then it was cool. Yeah. 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 Wow. But those. Yeah. It was. Did you wait? How did you get here? Did you, I flew. You flew. I took a Greyhound. Oh, I flew. Oh yeah. wow. That was intense. From okay, Wyoming. So I fell asleep. From Wyoming. I fell asleep yeah, in Idaho, yeah. right? And I woke up on like Terwilliger Boulevard, like on that place that has the the trees and it's super green. Yeah, the hill. Mm-hmm. And you know, in the Wizard of Oz, when you when you go in and it's too green and you have to wear the spectacles. Yeah. It was totally what it was like. I was like, I'm in the Emerald City of Oz. Like, wow. There's so much green here. This is insane. Like, See, for me, I got off the airplane. My boyfriend was working. His friend came to pick me up at the airport. And after we hung around for a little bit, he took me down to the waterfront. Um, and I just stood there in the big waterfront park and stared at the river and was just amazed. I grew up in California and Texas. And I spent summers at the ocean and all that. But I hadn't really spent that much time around a river. And for some reason, I saw the river and I was just like, okay, that's it. I'm home. You got the river. And it just, I it never shook it. And then I moved here <coughs> a year and a half later, something like that, to, to come and live with that boyfriend. Yeah. And then when we broke up a year and a half later, <laughs> um, my parents were like, okay, come home. Come on, we'll come get you. We'll, tr- we'll drive you back. And I was like, oh, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I live in Portland. This it's is where I belong. How you say about the river? Because like we were PD Explorer. We, had, we went to this thing called PD Explorer, which was like five architects, right, talking at PNCA mm-hmm. about. And one of them, Macola, talked about this. Oh, you guys have great notes on that too. Yeah, on the web. we had. Really it was good, so good post. that we because had to take intense. those notes. Was it, this oh, was, was this Sam the one Adams that you recorded? There, right? yeah. yeah, you there was, recorded. There's during two. The thing. We did uh, mm-hmm. Sam yeah. Adams. Second. Sam Adams was the second, and the first one was with Macola, and he talked about this yeah. river that how many people have seen the river today and everyone raised their hand and how many people have touched the river well no one right so like and he he had this video where you know you look at it from the west side and there's just you know there's a river and it's really pretty and then you look at it you look over it and it's like all this highways and junk in the way from experiencing the river so he's kind of upset mm-hmm. and he wanted to propose these new ways like roundabouts and circles kind of plazas like you know in Spain that or something like that built around the river yeah. right because so that it is it, important yeah you reclaim this public territory cuz we are identified by this river like we are divided east and west Correct. because of it we have the seven bridges it's not but, but west that side. is exactly what from what is happening and what Portland's one of the, you know, one of the, the, the star cities of, of, of this happening over the last, you know, many years. When I was, I'm a native, so when I grew up here, the river was not a place to go. So if you, like in the 1970s, when you crossed the Ross Island Bridge or, or the Markham or whatever and looked down in the river, all you saw was logs. Oh, yeah. Log jam. I mean, that's the history really? of... Logs were in there at that Logs time. were in there logs. still. They were they were getting... Yeah. They, you know, timber was still the the main economy of Oregon. It, it, it you know, it, it changed in the late 70s. That's part of the reason why Oregon kind of, you know, got some very smart people thought about high tech at the right time and started bringing bringing you know because they knew that the the timber economy would would leave would at some leave, point yeah. yeah and it you know in our and in, in the Oregon the local economy in Oregon when the tim- timber economy died it it was hard it was very difficult we had a very bad economic downturn right but when you were growing up in the in the early 70s in the mid 70s there were logs literally all down through where south waterfront was at and that was all heavy industrial area and where they've built mm. those condos where they built the tram where they're going to build the new OHSU site is all old brownfields and industrial land and and on the east side we have the problem because we that's where we the I5 you know was the put I-5. in in the early 60s and this is also part of the reclamation of 
the waterfront is also okay we're doing this on the west side we need to do this on the east side and part of right. the esplanade and, and what's going on there so if you ever watch it i recommend anyone watch my own private idaho from gus van zandt <laughs> great portland scenery because there's some great it's like shot i think in the early very in the early 80s and it's just at the point that gentrification is kind of coming in to the west side of Portland. So the interior scenes with like Flea and all these guys <laughs> inside, those are shot in the Governor Hotel. When the Governor Hotel the was remote. still wow. the Governor Hotel. Well, it was it was essentially like, you know, it was it was set for demolition before it was bought and you know, rec, you know, reclaimed for its prominence and they stuck a Jake's grill in there. And so those interiors mm, are in the Governor Jake's. Hotel. There's a there's a great scene where uh, Keanu Reeves and uh, River Phoenix are on a motorcycle and they ride up Broadway from Mary's Club, you know, from Burnside um, up Broadway, and you just see how kind of old Portland, how seedy it was, right, right, at that point. And it was just as things were starting to to happen, but it's just like a little slice. I love films that do that. I love yeah. things that get shot at a point in time where you can go back 20 years, even if it sucks. Yeah. But it's like that time you know? capsule, right? Where mm-hmm. it's, it's taking a cross-section. Like yeah. in one of those How Is This Built books. Exactly. Cool. It's interesting because this afternoon I talked to Uncle Nate at a table at Uncle Beer and Nate. Block. <laughs> and he had a uh, proposal of, hey, let's make a uh, Keep Portland CD sticker <laughs> there's oh, keep nice. portland weird nice, nice. there's keep portland beard mm-hmm. but let's keep portland city you there know because uh you know he describes his experience in new york and that new york is becoming very yes. safe you know and mm-hmm. one day you know i think he slept uh on the park bench or something maybe he passed out or something i can't confirm so slept on a park bench <laughs> cannot confirm uh, or deny and you know like money fell off so and i was whatever. so lucky because because i went to new york and caught Times Square at the very end of that. Of that before it that, becomes Disney Five. Yeah, exactly. Before Giuliani went in there and just really, you know, cleaned it up. I mean, I bought a, a five dollar Rolex watch. Um, you know, it, it was just <laughs> the whole, kind of the whole, Wonderful. yeah, the whole, the whole atmosphere of. of yeah. I of got New this. York. I got this watch in Spain for that same price. Yeah, <laughs> but it's so, in Spain. So what keeps you? What keeps you guys in Portland? And. Ah, so really interesting question. So I, I gave myself two years, and I said, okay, I'm going to try something. I'm going to try to do my own thing. And if I fail completely, I'm going to go to law school in two years. And like I did the LSAT prep course, and I, you know this this certain thing to make it an incentive not yeah. to fail, yeah. <laughs> so that I don't have to like go through the experience that all my friends have gone through who have gone through law school. So I'm like, okay, so I'm trying, you know, and and then at the end, like I'll probably leave right and and go back home to Colorado for a minute and you know see how it is and if it's terrible then I can always come back to or- Oregon it'll be okay but it's just like it's like a beta test right like it is a beta this test. is I've been stuck up on a hill right for like the past three and a half years and like this is my first intersection with like some sort of a reality that's not your typical reality it's like a a different reality in because Portland. Lewis and Clark was isolated right but but Portland itself is like it this is, in a sense, Portland it is, is completely too. different. It's, it's like no place on earth. But again, but that's the really Wyoming slogan. So, so whatever. <laughs> I should have loaded really? okay, okay. Oz sound effects. Portland, that I have. No, Portland totally. is no like no place on earth in a good way. In a, in a good there way. There we go. There we go. So, so yeah, like there. Sh- in a good way. It's amazing. Because, you know, and that's diorama, why... Diorama. It's a diorama city. You have a little bridge, mm-hmm. and you have like, little punk rockers, and you have the little the little river. It's so cute. And, like, it really is. We're, we're like a shoebox. We're culture in a shoebox. Technically, because to Disney New York, city. right, we're so small. Because, I, I, you know, I was in Denver for a while, and I came to Portland. It was so tiny. Like, you know? And so I'd go to a different quadrant during school. I'd schedule my classes, like, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and mm-hmm. spend four days looking at all the different random weird cultures and like studying you know anthropology of whatever you know and just finding the the most intense social groups in each place and each time and like what the heck is this place like you know is it real at all like yeah it's totally real like people are living here just doing what they want Mm -hmm. and that's the difference between like you know living a suburban life in a very conservative place like 
you're not maybe you're doing what you want because you've been trained your entire existence and your grandparents existence and the existence before that that this is the life that's good and that's what you wouldn't live but like then you break out of that and suddenly you can just do whatever you want but in a really interesting way where like you to, can it's amazing to a certain extent portland has the live and let live thing yeah more than any other place i've ever visited or been as long as you're not hurting somebody else, right. go ahead and do whatever it is that go you're ahead. doing. Oh, no, it's fine. It's fine. I don't like, like it, but it's okay. not what I'm doing. Yeah, exactly. right. And if you do something really cool, then everyone's like, yeah, we'll do that too. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, okay, done. Yep. And then it's awesome. Is that in open source is so popular. In right. Portland. I mean, we were kind of like a mini capital of I open ha- source. I have right? to ask, though. You said you gave yourself two years. Where are you? Um, I'm at two and a half months, three months mm-hmm. since I graduated. So uh, it, it's it's looking pretty good. Hopefully, good. I mean, I'm, it's I'm moving along. I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. I'm okay. going to a conference soon. I'm going to Gnome Dex. Yeah. Oh, cool. Gnome Dex. Cool. Gnome, Gnome Dex. Dex. And cool. it is not about the gnome, <laughs> the Linux gnome, right? Yeah. No, it, it's yeah, exactly. It, it was That's nice. what I thought the first time I heard that. Should I bring my laptop? Exactly. Right. right. Will I be looking at the interface? You should. <laughs> you should wear a gnome shirt if you go. But honestly, like conferences are expensive, and I said yeah. I, I can't pay for these. Like I mean, I yeah. could, but. And so I, you know, I got a cheaper housing situation, don't eat very much so I can afford conferences. <laughs> and so I was like, well, what if I just email, you know, I read that somewhere, like if you just email the person in charge of the conference, like they'll just be like, okay, you can go. So wow. I was like, so I wrote Chris Perillo. I'm like, Chris Perillo, I am a cyborg anthropologist. Um, I do this and this, this is my history and wrote like, you know, page letter and mm-hmm. like signed it. It was a very formal. And then he wrote back, you know, a few days later and he's like, you know, um, sure. You're, sure, you can come to Gnome Dex. I'll, you know, and he bought me a ticket, and so now I'm going. He's wow. Like, you know, That's make awesome. sure to... Chris Perillo bought you a ticket to Gnome Dex. Yeah. You go. And Thank then, you. And then Ponzi was like, hey, hey, that sounds nice. Let's talk at the conference. And I was like, cool, okay. That's awesome. And Itarasi bus next Thursday. And so, yeah, so the Itarasi huh? bus, I don't know who's going. Is it Tara Hunt and Marshall Kirkpatrick and... Terosi is going, yeah. Terosi is, is going separately. He's Tarosi, not going. who's Tarosi? I, I, yeah, I, I, uh, uh, I know nothing uh, of this Tarosi. God, it you know, sounds a little familiar. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. So, I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not sure. Right, so. Yeah, 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 so these these people. Oh, oh he sells t-shirts, right? Oh, okay. He sells, ah, yeah. Uh, yeah. No? What? Oh, they no. have gnomes on them. Yeah, I heard he's like, like the f- cute little with the red flowers. hat. Yeah, they're, and the, mm-hmm. they're fuzzy, and he sells yeah. flowers. Yeah, yeah. He sells a oh, lot of flowers. Oh, he's that guy that goes around table to table at the Mexican food restaurant yeah. selling roses. Selling roses. Uh, there you go. Yeah. That guy. Okay. He's, so, uh, it's, a, it's a good Mexican restaurant. Yeah. So exactly. what I heard it's about Yelp, it's, gnome dags is yeah. that uh, we were talking about this on the uh, beer and block table, was that uh, I remember Terosi and Verso talked about, you know, they were... They they had an iPhone and back when iPhone was introduced, you know, it all iPhone has a uh, a T nine feature where it would try to guess what words you're typing in. Yeah. So when they yeah. tried to type in GNOME Dex, it would always default to GNOME Sex, <laughs> and that was the hit of the uh, you know the hit of the year. That's uh that's good. Um, I mean oh, that could it. that could happen. There are hotels. Could very suppose. well, you know. <laughs> uh, but but you know that's that's uh. On that note, <laughs> it's GNOME Sex. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Are you really going to force me to end the show on Gnome Sex? If we had oh. Melissa Lyon here, we need <sighs> Melissa Lyon. And I think we... Maybe we need Melissa Lyon to take this up a notch, you know? Yeah, kick it up a notch, right? To talk about Gnome Sex with us? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I will read you the chat room. Tarosi jumped in and said... Finally, we get a true after-hours topic. <laughs> gnome <laughs> Sex. <laughs> That's what we should have been talking about the past hour. Mm, right. That that was a, that's a hit. All right. Well, go ahead. <laughs> oh, we can't do it. <laughs> Anyone have any ideas about gnome sex? How does SEO relate to? So when you do SEO, you're having your keywords have intercourse with the search engine robots, and when those keywords are sexy enough. The search engine robots have better intercourse than with other non-sexy keywords. Robot orgasm. <laughs> Very when nice. When there are robot orgasms, your search results jump all the way to the top of the SERPs. What's the SERPs? What search, is that? Search engine results page. Oh, okay. there we go. <laughs> 
Well, so people still use search engines a lot they for do. sex, In fact, right? If you, I mean, for, for sex, right? I for mean, sex? that's got to be the top hits, right? Yeah. Well, that, if you maybe think that about it, that, that you know? first page, if you're branding yourself, when you look up in Google, that's your that's your centerfold, right? <laughs> that's what yeah. I need to you do. Wanna, is brand myself. You want to own all the results. <laughs> Make sure all the top sex. <laughs> Actually, Cami Chaos, you have some really. You used to find some of the nice results of searches on Cami Chaos that would take you to to your page. Yes. You you would come in one day and go, "Can you believe someone searched on this?" And how did you do that? Did, me. Did you do that through Google Analytics or did you do that through? No. How was it that I? Oh no! I signed up with. I'm I'm gonna it's remember. Techn- it's sort no, of it's happened, not Technorati. Um, what was it? I'm kicking Ligit? myself. Legit, thank you. Um, Legit. Legit. How do you spell it? Every week, L I, I think it's L I G. L I Is it L I? Is it J? L I J I T. Oh, legit. And it's a little widget at the bottom of my page. We'll program next week. Thank you very much. And and hi Tara, how you doing? And uh, and every week they send me an email, and it has you know a list of all these different blogs that link to me it out? Yeah. and it's it a also free service. yeah <gasps> or it was I when i signed up so it's legit still- it's pretty legit and yeah. uh, and then it also often has a list of search terms things that were searched nice. to get like to a, your blog it's like a proto google analytics it's, it's before a, it probably was- a better ui than google analytics often they do has. other stuff too but that's mainly so back to the sex what function. were those searches that they would present you with? i wish i could remember i don't have my laptop with me right oh, now okay. so they would search oh, for sexy terms and you would show up yeah yeah, yeah. Nice. Mommified me. Anytime they put the word mommified in a sexy with some sex related thing, it would come up or with me. Or crazy whack tattooed. Um, yeah, there were some tattoo. Yeah, yeah, yeah like know. crazy sex tattooed mommy or crazy sex with tattooed mommy. That would <laughs> stuff nice. like crazy that. Crazy sex with gnomes and tattooed mommy. I don't know. Gnomes, Just lawn gnomes. gnomes. Crazy yeah. something about gnomes on gnomes. If you want to be visible, have them. like something about tattooed boobies as well came up once, and it's funny because I don't have any. Tattoos on my breast, so I was like, "That's completely the inaccurate." Chat room just lit up. Um, um, ooh, ten more people joined. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, tattoo Hello. boobies. Can we see proof of that, Gammy Chaos? Trust me, I already anticipate this. Yeah, my, my own future engine, right? Um, you have a, a future unknown. engine, so that would be what would that future legit or something? Exactly. Google Analytics is the future legits. Yeah. So, so many things. I suppose, yeah. We still have the gnome sex music. I know. Well, Let's I, keep the gnome sex. There's a there's a Vadoo pet a a, a poof <laughs> Look, it's a mining gnome. You know, it's a little gnome by, yeah, mining gnome. Go. By the time Kavitin comes on the show, he's <laughs> like, "You totally screwed up our corporate brand." Thank you very much. It's all hard hats and God knows. It what. is not it's my fault funny. that they gave me a hard hat. Exactly. No, 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 because any PR is good PR. Any PR is good PR. So it's okay. Well, that's what they say until they say, your lawyers call our lawyers and we're going to work this out. Right if they have, well, then, then then that's okay. That's sad. Then that, no, Because we no, love video. Because I don't want to be a lawyer, so like stop the lawsuits so that no yeah. lawyers get funding and then I won't. Exactly. It'll but then good. we won't need Amber to be a lawyer and she won't have to go to law school. Yeah. So we should... Uh, 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 I'm thinking we should ask the, the, the question that they asked Melissa Lyon uh, where do you see Portland in five years Ooh, that's good. I like that question too. I like it that is question. a good question maybe it should be like a tradition we should I ask hope everybody that was a question from the chat room last week not yeah. the crap there chat any, room that we have this week I'm are sorry there any, are there <laughs> any chat are there any questions from the chat we room we can ask questions of the chat room you can uh, ask questions to the chat room. Answer my question first. Okay. We'll he wants okay. to know. In five he wants years. To know in five years. In five years. Let's give it to Brom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get okay. it from. Yeah. Like I know. Should, oh. should we do it to sexy music? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, baby. <laughs> yeah. Well, then we'll be sexy. In the you have to answer like this. Exactly. You gotta lean in close to the microphone and tell us what you think Portland's gonna be like in five years. So I think. Um, in five years, um, Portland will be, in, 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 in some sense, be like a mini sort of, you know, San Francisco in that it will, you know, will become a tech mecca. But at the same time, it will also become like a creative, um, you know, sort of destination because as well as tech, I saw that a lot of creative people have moved here. Wow. It's not on yet. So that's, yeah. So is a lot of creative. Where does he do? He did this. 
uh, last they did weekend this at, at Backspace. Actually, Backspace. Oh, they, Backspace. they divided it into nine sections, and everyone did a live art piece. Like one person did like crazy modifications to hair, and another person did like live food and just made a bunch of food, and like someone else. But the the most impressive was this just guy who made this robot like because it's very tactile it and so, it's very physical yeah it was like you know when you watch somebody who's really good at making sushi mm. he did that with now dowels of wood and scroll <laughs> saws for three hours mm, just dexterous and like mm. you know just this and in wow like, and he didn't finish to tell you the truth but it was amazing but then he sport. sent us the picture so we're gonna put on ok hazelnut oh very cool we'll we can do feature. a little podcast so in five yeah. years you see Portland is everyone's making wooden robots. Yeah. Yeah, Come totally. On. totally. Yeah. Creative mecha as well as the tech creative. mecha. No, you, so we'll you talked about this before, right? The no. creative. The creative and the tech. And, and the uh, tech some people, coming together. Yeah. And uh, maybe it's and you know, maybe it's not gonna come together and that's okay, but it's gonna become like a destination. I'm sort in of. your camp. It's gonna at least I'm coexist. At oh. least peacefully coexisting. Peacefully in coexist, Portland. yeah. Cause it's already happening, and I talked to several people that wants to see it happen, or at least, you know, allow some cross pollination to happen. I don't know why yeah. people resist it, though. I mean, it, it seems so natural. I don't know. To what, I mean, again, to me, open source, right, seems really like a creative. Uh, it's a tech movement, but it seems very creative. I and mean, if you meet people in it. They seem yeah. to be so creative, and, and there's agree, other aspects of right? their the, lives, that, right? Yeah, you know, they're, they're not it's just like uh, these. It's very creative. Like the the dev yeah. team at, in my job is like all this, you know, very agile, and they have all these cards, and it's constantly in development. And when you look at the creative department, it's often like confined to like a Mac, which is like a right? symbol <laughs> of creativity. It's not like you're destroying and taking apart a whole database system. And in a way, when I look at like developers, they're much more inventive they're and much creative, more and they're creative. Like destroying I agree. Destroying and creative and you know, and it's just a different format. Right. Different format, different, uh, right? Because yeah. like in Medium. screen, you're going on uh, with a creative, and then you're doing this with like dev team. Like it's just they're both very similar. They just don't have the same vocabulary, I guess, but they have logic streams and and the, it's actually just, creatives doesn't have as much logic stream, no, which is why you see me meander fuzz, on topics from topics fuzz and it's so, all fuzzy i think in in five years though portland will be like the capital of the semantic world like worldwide mm -hmm. world. like they'll be doing all the programs that deal with like semantic like semantic web like you know where you're going like like dealing with like you know things that that apply to you dealing with like RFIDs and like super super local things and tracking and like doing things that are actually useful to your life and like you know all sorts of different programs that deal with that. Um, so you think uh, so you think Portland will become the surveillance mecca? No, that's kind of well. I mean, it will. That, that it'll be some extent, though. It'll, done but it'll be, yeah, it'll be, it'll be choosing. voluntary. Yeah, yeah but the open source will keep it in check. Already I think. tons of surveillance. And weird enough use that you know that you know they just it's already been purchased and done right but yeah. right and they use it at airports and they have like you know every time you walk in like a casino you get a unique id number and your movements like they'll track a movement like if you look like somebody who's been recorded in the past in one of their databases that stole from an atm machine and you're doing the same motions then you're tagged as someone who will steal from the atm machine and therefore you're taken down that like they just memorize movements, mm. right? And this is so this rather is than a, it'll be the Twitterverse that'll finger you, <laughs> right? Yeah. Like, hey, that's the guy who stole from the ATM machine, right? Yeah. The, the crowdsourcing, and then there's such a dark side to all this. Too. Of course, there's always a dark I side. Really to wanna, every light I really want to. I want to do a podcast one day that talks about the dark side. Maybe we'll, we'll interview you. You on can't the dark have side. the good without Oscar yeah. the Grouch. Yeah, yeah. I know. well, I know. very in, good in analogy. School, all we read were super dark side everything like technology is evil you know like super anti everything and like super blah 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 and so i was just like okay what if i do exactly the opposite and like what's the positive part you know like okay here's some cool positive parts like social community like stuff that dunk engelbart the inventor of the mouse talked about like you know connecting people in third world countries to like some little startup funds so they could get a cow so that they could like survive for a little while longer, you know, and using the excess like change that has been developed to do that. Cool. Yeah, that's awesome. Like so equally bad and equally good. Or you could talk about like tantalum mining for cell phone technology. Tantalum mining. It's the worst thing ever. The, the worst, worst mining in the conditions world. in the universe. Right? So explain it for us with the pea brains. So it was in a, what is that, Bear Deluxe magazine? 
in February, I think. Wait a minute. Bear Deluxe, do I need to cue the music? Bear again? Deluxe sounds like something else entirely to me. <laughs> this sounds is like, like Gnome Sex. <laughs> gnome Sex, Bear Deluxe. Cue up the music. Sex. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> so tantalum mining is supposed to be like the worst labor intensive thing ever that like little kids do, and tantalum's in a piece of your cell phones, right? So when they say oh, gotcha. 10 million iPhones gotcha. deployed, that's Evil 10 million little chunks of tantalum that have been mined. Right. Mm. Um, it's really upsetting anyway but, but what do you do about it right if you try to go into the country and like videotape it nothing's gonna happen so like what do you do so is anyone on skype so we're gonna have to start wrapping the show up soon but before we do is there anyone on skype that we might oh, want to audience talk to? question yeah. or do we have any audience questions audience questions question? weren't we supposed to do that uh, i i solicited no. the uh, chat room i think they're just uh, dazed and confused at this point um <laughs> when the, uh, when the, the chat combination room is of both dazed and confused, it's <laughs> yeah, it's just yeah, like it's it's after just, hours. There's a lot. There's just a lot of, lot of kind of back and forth, but no, no, no big question. That's They're okay. We encourage that. We encourage that, right? It's Hugh Walter it's talks not, about. It's strange not to see what's going on in chat. I have no like metrics, and I have no idea like. Well, the chat At the same time, it's always good to takes let it on go. a life of its own. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It becomes yeah. kind of an entity. Like those clouds in the sky that turn into animals. Mm-hmm. You know what it is? It's it's the back channel, like um, uh, one of my favorite shows, just like top five, top ten television experiences was Mystery Science Theater. Mystery yeah. Science Theater. That's a total back Mystery channel Science show. You're totally Theater. right. That show was the back channel show because it was like the whole thing where you're watching these absolutely terrible movies like strange love life um <coughs> and um we're and, not a movie but we're, terrible we're an experience but anyway um y- you'd be watching those terrible b movies and the back channel was what you were thinking as you were watching the movies and these guys and the time you'd have convergence was when those guys would get in your head and would say the thing that was on that your you, mind yeah. right yeah you know? kind yeah. of like those two commentators that appears at the end of every muppet uh-huh. Right. Oh, the right. Uh, exactly. Yeah. Waldorf the Muppet Show. and Astoria. Waldorf. No, it's not Astoria. Uh, it's Waldorf or Astoria Hotel. Yeah. Well, it's no, not one. Astoria though. It's Waldorf and another know. hotel. Something. Yeah. Yeah. Can't remember. Have the other you one. been to Astoria, Oregon? Yes. yes. Isn't it gorgeous? Yes. It's gorgeous. I'm very. I'm very. It's a great setting to film a robot movie. Hey. <laughs> or a gnome. <laughs> a movie about little kids. <laughs> or a movie about gnomes and robots. Or a movie about... Getting together. Whoa, a guy that's who would someday become the Whoa, governor that's of California. And teach kindergarten or something with a gun <clears throat> and become the governor. I don't yeah, know. On that note... Yes. I think we should say goodnight. Well, do we have one last question? For brand on. Amber, as I'm queuing up the music. Do we have one last question? I'm asking you, Kevin. Oh, I love this. Actually, do they have come a question? On, do you have questions for us? Do, do they have a question? Oh, yeah. Because really, actually, the show is about us, and it's not yes, about you. Yes, it is. What do you think Portland's going to be like? Oh, yes. <laughs> no, Turn the question no. back on that. That's an odd question. Hey, uh, how do you make one of your splendorific tiki drinks that you made at your tiki oh, party. Oh, tiki recipe. Is that a recipe or seven can you share types it? of vodka or something. Rum. Oh, oh, oh rum. The Miki Tiki. That's the perfect question to end the podcast. The recipe for the Miki Tiki oh, is... Oh, he needs drink music. Okay, okay. Drink music. We haven't even done drinks. This is such a... There we go. I think we did SEO analytics to this instead. <laughs> We're not changing the music, right? You know? The Miki Tiki. Depending on the quantity of Miki Tiki you wish to consume, you need a couple jugs of cran raspberry juice, a bottle of white rum, a bottle of coconut rum, a bottle of pineapple rum, a bottle of banana rum. Wait a Actually, minute. that's half a, half a bottle of banana rum. Did you do this one before? Half a bottle of raspberry rum. Not in this kind of quality. Um... Let's see. I've got to count my rums here. I think it's six that point, kinds of rum. At that point, when you've got through those rums, you don't remember the rest. No, <laughs> and then and then about a about a about a half a bottle of a, of a dark rum. Of a dark rum. We prefer cruising. And uh, and like I said, the juice. And then you mix it all up. Wait a minute, juiced. Juiced. Not oh. Juice. Oh, juice. Oh, juiced. Very apropos. Juice. No, the cran raspberry juice and the six kinds of rum, and you mix them all together until they taste right. 
And then you drink them over ice. Yeah. Drink them over ice. Yeah. Typically, I would make it in a glass, though, which would be, you know, half a shot of most of the rums with a full shot of coconut rum. So uh, so put some juice in the bottom of your glass. Put one full shot of coconut rum and a half a shot of the other rums I mentioned. Wow. And then top it off with the cran raspberry juice. That's very impressive. It's very cool. You need to have that again that's soon. Like, that's more complicated than search engine optimization. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree. There's an You just grab a bottle of rum and I just enjoy drink making it drinks. And just call it a day. Hard liquor. I enjoy making drinks. It's fun. So maybe yes, you should do like one drink for every episode, right? Yeah, the end of the well, we episode do. drink. We kind of do. Oh, yeah? Oftentimes we do it towards the beginning of the show. We talk about what everyone's drinking. What did we what drink tonight? This? Oh, we have sangria. Yeah, yeah. Sangria. It's not really sangria because I messed with it too much for it to actually have a real name. But it's good. But it's the chaos, chaos household version. It's a 2003 Syrah that Dr. Normal uh, made. Right. What's the? It's not brewed. You. I. We made wine. You made wine. It's yeah, a 2003 okay. wine that that we made okay. with friends. Uh, a bottle of that, and then a bottle of IKEA's. Uh, <laughs> lingonberry. Lingonberry apple cider. Lingonberry apple cider. Um, about a cup Wine's of Lincolnberry. San Pellegrino. A shot of a, uh, of a brandy, some sort of brandy. Uh, <laughs> Do you get the sense uh, how she mixes a drink? It's just kind of like four little cutie pie oranges sliced. And what do we squeezed. got in here? Oh, I got and, some brandy and a I got lemon. Some crap, you know, sliced just and throw squeezed. it in together, and, and then I stick it in the fridge. Oh, oh, with a couple tablespoons of sugar. Yeah. All right. And uh, and and that's what we gave to you to drink this evening. <laughs> Thank you. No no wonder uh, we we have said very interesting. Conglomerate. It's like mixing a drink. Our conversation has been mixed in very uh-huh. different ways. This is very, very good music, good. by the way. Thank you very much. This Thank is you. the Doc Normal, John Barra's... Trio. Doc Normal Now. Yeah. Actually. Oh, it's the Doc Normal Now. It's, it's not the Big trio. It's called Big Spinner. By no it. copyright songs. So anyway, um, well, thank you very much. Thank, thank you for you joining very much. us. Thank you. Thank this you to fun. everybody in the chat room. We had a lovely evening. Next week, we'll be talking to Don Foster and potentially... Some of the creators of Shazam. You gotta get right. Todd Knefsky in. He has so much good stories. I think you won't believe. Excellent. It's suited for after hours. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Bye bye.